There was a point in the live stream where a fan yelled out, I peed my pants for you, Frank, because he'd been waiting at the front all day. This week's episode is coming a few days later than usual, and I want to just start with my thorn of the week, which was watching a live stream of Frank Ocean set at Coachella, not on YouTube where we were promised a live stream of Frank's show. Coachella had been promoting this throughout the week. I watched the set through a TikTok live stream. The audio was bad, the view was bad. <laughs> Even if the live stream that I watched happened to be, you know, perfectly right in front of the sound booth, exactly where you want to be at a show, because closest to the sound booth is where it's going to sound the best. It's, you're, it's usually going to be in the center, so you'll have a good view. There wasn't too much to see. The stage itself was a jungle of scaffolding and set pieces, and Frank was behind it, barely in view, with only a few camera angles on the screens to look at. To be able to see this artist that was headlining the festival, that had spent all day, eight, ten hours, sitting in the hot son waiting for just this one artist. There was a point in the live stream where a fan yelled out, I peed my pants for you, Frank, because he'd been waiting at the front all day. For me, it was just a lower quality live stream, but for the people who were there the whole time, there were some more serious emotions involved. Let's start with a timeline of the events. Now, the first thing that people started to notice was YouTube made a tweet. Frank Ocean is not scheduled to appear on the Coachella live stream, provided a link. This tweet has almost 14 million views, and it is very, very ratio. 15,000 quote tweets to 13,000 likes. This is where we started to see some drama on the subreddit. You know, there's a lot of people at Coachella, but there's even more people at home who were hoping to spend their evening watching the first live stream performance and, you know, high quality of this artist who hasn't performed in almost a decade. Now, I watched the set and it started out, you know, not too bad, an intimate kind of acoustic. He was singing his own songs. Several of them were different versions, new versions, new mixes, remixes. You know, he was doing interesting performances that fans hadn't heard before. That What a great way to, you know, come out of this long performance hiatus. But you start to notice, you know, there's some, some very long pauses in between songs. I also forgot to mention he came on about an hour late after singing a few of his popular songs. Songs, Frank Frank started talking to the crowd a little bit. The first controversial statement, he mentioned he's not here to promote an album. Uh, after this, the crowd started booing at him and he said, whoa, 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 not to say that there's not an album, to kind of get himself out of this uh, sticky comment. I want to talk about why I'm here because it's not because of a new album. It's because, not that there's not a new album, it's like, uh, but he said, not right now, it's not coming now. And so, you know, people on Reddit are like, the album's confirmed. And then other people are like, no, he was just trying to get a, get away from the booing. You know, who knows what the, the real story is. I'm sure there's some music as to whether or not it's, you know, a very meticulously planned album like Blonde, you know, who's to say? But he told a really heartwarming story about how he used to come to Coachella with his brother, his brother who tragically passed away several years ago in a car accident. My brother and I, we came to this festival a lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was dragged out here half the time because I hated the dust out here. I always left with a respiratory infection or whatever. <laughs> so I, I would like avoid coming in. He would always, I would always end up here. And um, one of my fondest memories was watching Ray Strummer on, I don't know what that stage is called, but watching Ray Strummer with my brother. Coachella brings up a lot of hard memories for him and how this kind of show was in his honor and he was doing it because of the good memories at Coachella that he had with his brother. After a couple more songs, uh, another kind of controversial moment in the show happened when he left the stage and brought on a DJ called DJ Crystal Mess and she played some, you know, Jersey Club remixes of some of his tracks. DJ Crystal Mess is an excellent DJ. I enjoyed the, the kind of EDM cut. He came out after this set and said, the idea behind this was I wanted to have a rave in the middle of my set. You came here to see Frank Ocean and I gave you a rave. Uh, maybe this is kind of like an homage to how he used to come to Coachella with his brother. And there's all these different artists you may, you know, walk in hoping to see the weekend and then you end up in the Yuma tent having a little rave moment in between sets. I didn't really mind it, but a lot of people were a little bit uh, peeved that, that he wasn't actively participating in the kind of music making and just kind of brought on this DJ to fill about 25, almost 30 minutes of time in an hour and a half long set. There's a very viral video of one of the security guards twerking, which 
which I'm sure many of you have seen. As the set continued, uh, there were a couple more kind of intimate, stripped back performances, more awkward pauses between songs where he's, you know, going and talking to the band, presumably figuring out like what exactly they're going to play next. He played a couple of songs directly off of the album, not even lip syncing, just kind of dancing to his song Nights. His last song was his cover of At Your Best, which is off of his Apple Music only visual album Endless. And he abruptly says, hey, they're calling curfew, I gotta go, and he walks off stage. Now, the way that these curfews work is you sign a deal and basically the city will find Coachella and Coachella will find you, the artist, for every minute that you perform past curfew. Um, nobody knows the exact numbers. I believe on Sunday it is actually significantly more expensive, but you know, you have Calvin Harris going 30 minutes over curfew the night before, and then Frank Ocean shows up an hour late and then pretty close to the curfew time is like, all right, that's it, goodbye. And the crowd starts chanting, we want Frank, we want Frank, we want Frank, but he doesn't come back. The show's over, they turn on the lights, they start taking apart the set. This is my recollection of the show. Amongst all of these kind of micro scandals, there were some slightly larger scandals behind the scenes. So let's move on to these tweets from Festive Owl. So Festival is a is a pretty popular Twitter account for people who are into the festival scene. They're kind of a, a trustworthy source that has kind of proven themselves to work in the industry and they'll often provide leaks, context behind the scenes, kind of drama or explanations for these festivals. And I'm gonna read the tweet for those of you listening on Spotify. I've been speaking with sources about exactly what transpired and how things went so far downhill Sunday for Frank Ocean and Coachella, so here you go. The stage production was supposed to, and did, contain an ice rink that was constructed and ready to go. Frank decided at the last minute that he no longer wanted it at all. All of the people walking around him at the start of the performance were actually ice skaters who had been practicing for weeks and were supposed to be skating as part of the production. Coachella had to deconstruct the approved stage, which had been planned and signed off on for months in advance, and melt the entire ice rink and then set it up how Frank decided today with no warning, which is what you ended up seeing and caused the hour-long delay. This all happened when doors had already opened for Sunday and people were securing their spots to see him. If the last minute changes weren't made, he wouldn't have performed at all, leading, leaving the festival without a closing headliner. Frank also personally pulled the plug at the last second on the live stream, which left a very sour taste in many inside Coachella's mouths. Ultimately, and I quote, it just didn't seem like he wanted to be there, but was obligated to be. Everything, including him, fell apart last minute. Don't expect to see any coverage from the festival about the set, something that is unprecedented in the history of Coachella. The relationship is not in a good place right now. Another tweet later. When it really comes down to it regarding Frank Ocean and Coachella, these are the people I feel the worst for. Like they said, blood, sweat, and tears, only to have the rug ripped out from underneath them. These are the people who bring experiences to life. They deserve better. And it appears to be a text from one of the employees I worked on that ice rink. We all thought it was super dumb, but awesome at the same time. We lugged those heavy fake rocks, set up lights around it and beneath it. It was gonna be so dope. The stagehand and production crew morale really dropped when we found out it wasn't being used. Hundreds of man hours, blood, sweat, and tears for nothing. In part, that's just how it goes, but in reality, everyone was super upset. We did hours and hours of work only to scrap it hours before. Now, let's start by giving everybody some reasonable doubt here. Festival is an anonymous source who works in the festival industry. This tech may or may not be real. There's no proof. Festival probably has some mild bias to defend festival organizers based on how they seem to be working on every major festival. But there have been other sources uh, which have kind of corroborated the story um, that the ice skating was canceled very last minute. If so, it really is pretty awful for these performers who practiced for, I, I guess it was a six week rehearsal schedule. They had been practicing this for six weeks. Obviously, there was all this equipment. They had a huge uh, catwalk out of the stage, which was never used. Frank just sat on a school behind this scaffolding. And so it's sad to see uh, basically all of this wasted. Now, you may say, well, all of this was only weekend one. Who Like, I, something must have gone wrong, whether it was Frank, whether it was Coachella, whether it was a series of unfortunate events. Whoever's fault it is, we'll, we'll get it right next week. Well, here's the final follow-up from Festival. Confirmed Frank Ocean has pulled out of Coachella and will no longer be performing this Sunday to close out the second weekend. Blink-182 has been tapped instead for the final headlining slot of 2023. And then another follow-up to give some further insight on Frank Ocean's Coachella cancellation. According to sources, quote, It may be official tonight, but after what happened Sunday, there was no realistic chance he was stepping back on a Coachella stage next weekend. 
if ever. We're seeing some kind of mainstream press. Injured Frank Ocean cancels second Coachella performance after chaotic first show. And here's where we get this um, sort of official explanation later the week after the weekend. Singer says, first performance isn't what I intended following leg fracture and sprain with reports of an ice rink stage being dismantled hours before. The singer had suffered a leg injury during the festival's first week, and the singer has received medical advice not to perform again due to two fractures and a sprain in his left leg. And so there's our sort of official explanation. We get this sort of press release from Frank's team, which is going to mainstream press outlets. There's all these conflicting emotions with his brother, with the memories, with the just inertia of not having performed for so many years. Nervousness, it makes sense why maybe he wants to hide behind some props so he's not right in front of the faces of this crowd that he knows he's about to disappoint because of this unexpected injury and these unexpected emotions. I wanna talk briefly about the Frank Ocean fan base I think that Frank Ocean has some of the most parasocial fans on the internet. Go watch that Ludwig video, I Am Not Your Friend. He's an artist, he's making art, he's releasing it. What you get out of it is up to you. How this music speaks to you is not him speaking to you. It's him speaking and you interpreting it personally. All throughout the concert, we were hearing these cheers. We love you, Frank. We love you, Frank. I love you, Frank. We want Frank. And the tone of these calls was encouragement, like he's a friend that needs to be encouraged. He's an artist getting paid millions of dollars to do this. I think he's not your friend. I think a friend relationship is not the correct relationship for a creator and fans. And so I thought that was a little bit strange when, when he made the, this is not about an album and got booed. Okay, I don't know if that's gonna make him like <laughs> work faster. Like it's just a little bit rude when he's you know obviously trying to make this comeback. And after he said, not that there's not new album like you could hear a call in the crowd of a guy going yeah that there better be he doesn't owe anything he's you're not his boss you're not his friend he's an artist making art you're welcome to listen to it or not i think if everybody just kind of relaxed lowered the entitlement there would be less disappointment now that being said spent all this money it costs a lot of money to go to coachella the hotels are brutally expensive. The flights to Palm Springs that weekend are brutally expensive. If you fly to LA, you gotta rent a car, that's another $500. I think it's fine to have reasonable expectations for a performance that you're spending a lot of money to go to, but I don't think you're entitled to him making a new album just because you really, really want one. So I think there's nuance here. You're allowed to have reasonable expectations for the performance that you paid for without being entitled to a set of expectations that you as a fan artificially kind I of- do think that people yourself. that now all of this is before a video started trending on TikTok today of Frank jogging off of the stage after his set on his apparent two fractures in his leg and sprained ankle. What did he say? Did he say that's my life? You can see him literally jogging downstairs and trotting to his car, getting in and leaving right after the show in his outfit. And so this really opened the can of worms. I'm showing um, one of the top posts in the last 12 hours from his subreddit, accusing Frank of basically faking the injury as a cop out to avoid a breach of contract and possibly collect on insurance for weekend two based on a basically a medical exclusion to get out of his contract to perform two weeks. And so the conspiracy here is, you know, he had been booked to play Coachella in 2020. It's now 2023. He doesn't want to perform at this time. In 2020, he had just released several singles and he was kind of uh, ramping up for this large sort of set of releases, possibly a new album, possibly a new tour. And Coachella was gonna kind of kick that off. Everything got canceled. Now it's three years later and he's still in this contract and now he has to play in. 2023. The idea is basically he tried to self-sabotage the first set um, with all these last minute changes and then he faked the leg injury to get out of performing weekend two during the set that he was forced to play. He killed you know a third of it with the DJ. He killed a third of it with silences. He killed another quarter of it with playing songs straight off the aux cord and so he really didn't perform for a very large percentage of the time on stage. And so there's this nasty taste in everybody's mouth where it feels like he wanted to do the absolute bare minimum to get his check and get out. And I think there's a lot of fans that are disappointed, that are upset, that are angry at all of this. And I think those are all reasonable emotions to feel when this figure that you look up to may not behave the way that you expect him to as someone worthy of your praise. And it, you can almost become embarrassed by being a fan of someone who who's in recent history seems to only be letting you down. What is my opinion? I think a lot of this could have been avoided with 
communication with transparency if Frank made some kind of post or official communication explaining exactly what happened, talking about the leg injury, not kind of talking through his lawyers to the press. Having been a fan for a long time, I would have been very... I would have been even more surprised had he done any of those. He's always been very reclusive. He's always been very quiet. He's always been very reticent to speak. I don't think we're going to get any 100% factual errors. Everything's going to be tinged with a hint of uncertainty. We don't really know what happened that day. We don't know if he was on some painkillers and able to jog down the stairs fine. We don't know if he was faking everything and hates his fans. If Frank Ocean's fans were my fans, I don't know. Um, if I, it's, uh, it must be rough when Frank Ocean opens his subreddit, I would not like to be in that. I would not like to be in that position. We also need to talk about this ridiculous Justin Bieber post. He goes, I was blown away by Frank Ocean's Coachella performance. His artistry is simply unmatched. His style, his taste, his voice, his attention to detail. I was deeply moved. It made me want to keep going and get better as an artist. He continues to set the bar high and gave me a night I will never forget. Thanks, Frank. People are saying he was uh, asleep at the show, which is pretty hilarious. I'm sure the comment section is going to be fun for this discussion. Please don't hesitate to leave your thoughts down below. On a more positive note, uh, my rose of the week, as always, this week is White Fang. White Fang is Alice in Wonderland's side project, which she did a live debut at Coachella. Um, she announced on Twitter this was one of the, this was the fastest growing artist after Coachella with a huge growth in streams. I was listening to a couple of the tracks, and, and the only way that I would describe it is floral techno it's very floral pretty kind of vines growing and leaves and peonies blossoming techno definitely check out white fang if you're into techno or electronic music subscribe for more music industry updates conversation my name is bear i hope you all have a wonderful morning evening day night whenever you may be watching or listening to this and i'll talk to you next time